Good morning, and welcome to our worship service on this Sunday, the 6th of September, which is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. We would like to recognize that we are worshiping today on traditional Iroquois of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples. Please check our website or our social media accounts for the latest updates on life at First Church. We will be continuing to record these services, but next Sunday, September 13th, you are invited, if you would like to attend in person, our outdoor worship service at St. Lawrence Park at 1030 on Sunday the 13th. Please bring a folding chair and a lunch that you can eat yourself because we're not allowed to share under COVID-19 protocols. Uh, for pastoral care or assistance, you may email the church or call 613-345-5014 or 613-340-3310. Now come, let us join together in the call to worship, which is on the screen in front of you. Sing to God a new song. Give praise to the Lord in the assembly of the faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. God crowns the humble with salvation. Let the saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy both day and night. May the praise of God be in their mouths. And our first hymn is number 378, if you have one of the navy blue hymn books, or the words on the, will be on the screen in front of you. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you. We thank you for how you hold us by our hand as we learn to walk in your ways, for how you seek us out when we wander from your path, for how you watch over us in times of peril and times of ease. We praise you, O oh God, for your love, and we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for not only accepting us, but for encouraging us, supporting us, and giving us life. As we meet before you now in this new month and new season in life, guide and lead us by the power of your living word. May our song, our prayer, our speaking and our listening, our thinking and our doing, give you glory both now and forevermore. Amen. And I invite you now to join with me in the responsive uh, prayer of confession, which will be on the screen in front of you. As the people of God in this place, we know that a crucial part of our witness is revealing Christ to the world through the way we love and care for one another. Forgive us when people do not see any evidence of, in us of the one who is to come. So many people are yearning for the light of hope to dawn in their lives. Remind us that the light of Christ shines 
through people like us. Merciful God, cleanse our hearts and minds of all that hinders us from loving you and loving our neighbor. Let our lives radiate faith active in love as we watch and wait for your breaking into our world once more in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, laying aside the works of darkness, we live in the light of Christ. We are assured that Christ is with each of us, wherever we are, blessing us with grace and truth. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and lifted up to new life. Thanks be to God. And now I'd like to invite the children, because it's time to see what's in the gospel box for this morning. The Bible tells us that we should love our neighbors. And it says we should not only love them, but we should love them as much as ourselves. Now, do you love yourself? Well, if you're like me, you take care of yourself. You feed yourself and you do all kinds of things for yourself. So I think we can say that we love ourselves. But who are these neighbors we're supposed to love? Do you all have neighbors? Well, of course you do. You have people who live near you. You have friends that you know from school and people that come to church. They're all our neighbors. Now, I couldn't quite fit this in the gospel box this morning, but here's a globe and here's Canada. We're right around here. So what about we can love people that live here near us but what about people, say, here? Or here? Or even way over here in Australia, where we went on vacation earlier this year. Do you know any of these people in this area, in any of these areas? I mean, this is Russia. I don't know if you know anybody that lives in Russia or anybody who lives in Africa. Well, probably not. I mean, I know I know a few people that live in Australia, but I don't know anybody that lives here. So I know you don't know them personally, but all the people in these places are our neighbors. When the Bible tells us to love our neighbors, the Bible's telling us we have to love all the people of the world. Spin the globe around. Actually, this one doesn't spin very well, but love all the people in the world, even if they live far away and even if we've never met them. Actually, I'll just put that back here right now. Our church knows all the people, the people in the world are our neighbors, and we try to help people out wherever we are. Now, is there anything that you could do to help with the work that our church is doing to help other neighbors in other countries. One thing our church is doing right now is helping people who are in Lebanon right now because they've suffered a terrible explosion. One thing we can do is we can pray for them. We can ask God to help our neighbors all over the world. So let's do that right now, Can, shall we? Let's pray for all our neighbors all around the world. Dear God, we know that all the people of the world are our neighbors, and we want to help our neighbors as much as we can. Please help us to help you bless all people who are in need and give them whatever they need. Most of all, bless them with your love in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'll put this over here. Let us pray. Awaken our hearts and minds to your word, O God. Give us understanding so that by the power of your Holy Spirit we are able to do all you command for love's sake. Amen. 
Our scripture reader for this morning is Kathleen Howard, and she's going to lead us in our psalm and our scripture lesson for today. Our responsive psalm is Psalm 149. The words are on the screen. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their ruler. Let them praise God's name with dancing, making melody to the Lord with tambourine and lyre. For the the Lord Lord takes takes pleasure in this people and and adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their rulers with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Praise the Lord. And our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14, and I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Let no doubt, re- let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, nor in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, for the word of God around us, thanks thanks be to God. God. to speak his kindness, no eyes to see the pain. Little compassion, no empathy remains. How will they hear the message that Jesus is alive? How can they know the truth unless it's true?
Let us pray. Loving God, may the words that our message that you are to give to those who are gathered here today, may it come through me or if need be in spite of me, for Jesus' sake. Amen. One of my favorite newer musicals is Come From Away. I've seen it three times. The first time I saw it was in New York City. The second was in Toronto. And third, this past January when we were in Melbourne, Australia. For those of you who are not familiar with the musical, it revolves around the events of 9-11 and the required downing of all commercial aircraft in flight around the world. One of the places that received many of these stranded aircraft and their passengers was Gander, Newfoundland and the small communities that surrounded it because Gander had a runway that was long enough to take international craft, aircraft. I'll try not to be a spoiler here, but the musical then goes on to tell the story of how these small communities extended Newfoundland hospitality and ingenuity to people from all over the world, managing to feed, clothe, and shelter these people, managing to work across different cultures, languages, and religions to make their involuntary guests feel safe, welcomed, and loved. It could have been very different. The people of Gander could have resented having to deal with what had been imposed on them by governments and circumstances and given only a very grudging welcome. Likewise, the involuntary airline guests could have also been uncooperative and irritable. I'm sure they were tired, anxious, and very afraid. But by working together and acknowledging their common humanity, they loved their neighbors as themselves. And the bonds of love that were formed amid the trauma of 9-11 continue to this day. We've seen similar loving responses in this COVID-19 pandemic, haven't we? Both in the larger community and in our own congregation. You've been praying faithfully for our church supporting it financially and caring for each other, even if that has been from a distance. Phone calls, emails, text messages, video calls, even postcards. You've each been doing what you can to show the love of God. And you've also been generously supporting service agencies in our community who have worked to feed and support the hungry and those without work. Paul tells us in our scripture passage for today that not only can we work together as people of faith to show how God wants us to live, he also points out what we need to do as individuals within this community of faith. He urges each of us to live by the Spirit in an attitude of forgiveness, acceptance, and reconciliation. In our current environment of division, negativity, and fear, our own individual actions in working for peace, love, and hope, well, they shine. They help to bring about the kingdom of God and the light of Christ to others. The message in our text today is one that Paul proclaimed throughout his entire public ministry. And the message is that the law is fulfilled in the gospel message of love. Paul points out that as Christians, we can only fulfill God's commands. And in our scripture today, he referred to several of the Ten Commandments by acting both individually and as a community of faith to love our neighbor. We are entering a new season in the year, the season of autumn. 
and we're also in the midst of a time like none of us have ever seen before. But like the people of Gander during 9-11, it is in precisely times like this that we, as the church, can step out in faith and show God's love to those around us. And the reason we as believers should act as Paul has described in the second part of today's text is because of the urgency of these unbelievable times. Ancient Greek culture had two concepts for time, chronos time and kairos time. Chronos is the root word for our word chronological. Sequential time, where the hours, days, and years follow in order. Kairos time, on the other hand, signifies an opportune time to act. The word kairos is used 86 times in the New Testament and refers to a time in which God acts to further God's purposes in the world. And so Paul is speaking of Kairos time in our text today, an opportune time to act as people of God. Because the salvation that Paul is speaking of in our text is not our own personal, not just our own personal salvation, but the imminent coming of the kingdom of God on earth. So Paul urges his readers and us as well to be alert and awake to God's working in the world, knowing that the time is ripe for God to act. You see, every age is a kairos time. Every generation is a time to be urgent. Every place is a setting for pressing on with the work of the gospel. So we as the church, as the congregation of First Presbyterian Church in Brockville, are called in this time, in this place, in this Kairos time, to live in love and show our faith through our actions. God is at work in our community and in the world, and we are called to be at work as well, preparing for God's coming by being faithful and holy in our living practicing the message of reconciliation and forgiveness. And, like the people of Gander on that long ago September day, following God's love, the law of love and grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God of this and every day, we hear your word for us. Now as we step into this day, may your message for us guide our feet. As we live this day, may your message help to bless those we love. As we learn this day, may your message teach us your ways. And as we move forward into this Kairos time, help us to always follow your law of love. In Jesus' name, amen. Our next hymn is number 784 in this navy blue hymn book, or the words will be on the screen in front of you. The hymn is called, Thy Kingdom Come, on Bended Knee, number 784.
And now let us join together in prayer for each other, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Give us the grace, loving God, to pray with our hearts as well as our lips, and to serve you and our neighbors with our daily choices and decisions as well as our prayers. In places where the church celebrates with joy today, where it laughs with children, where it honors the elderly, where it is angry because of persecution, where it is stirred to action because of injustice, we pray that you direct the church, especially in these unique times and seasons of life. In places where people are disillusioned, where they are frightened or frustrated, where they are tempted to act and speak unkindly, we pray that you nurture your people. In places where there are programs of compassion and need of support, where the poor are ignored or pushed further to the margins, where faith requires nurturing, where confidence is dwindling, we pray that you will inspire new vision and encourage us to act in these Kairos times. In places where people feel that they have no voice, where healing feels beyond imagination, especially in these pandemic times, where there are not enough words to express pain, where people are deaf to cries of sorrow and suffering, we pray that you will bring new life and hope as we work towards your kingdom on earth. Into the places that we now name and picture in the silence of this time, we pray that you will bring blessings and support. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. that the mission and ministries of our church are ongoing. You can give online through Canada Helps. You can give by pre-authorized remittance. Uh, contact the church office to sign up for PAR. That's how I do it, so I don't forget. By e-transfer to firstkirk at truespeed.ca. You can pop your check in the mail to First Presbyterian Church, 10 Church Street, Box 885, Brockville, Ontario, k 6 b W1, or you can deliver your offering envelope through the mail slot in the door, the red door on Church Street, and the envelopes are collected regularly. Now please let us join in singing the doxology.
In the power of the Holy Spirit, we, are, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God and the body of Christ. Go, love and care for one another in the name of Christ. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>